Chapter 81 Little Uncle, Do You Think I Am a Monster? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 81 Little Uncle, Do You Think I Am a Monster? Tan Emo had something to ask Wei Zhiqian. She didn't want to have any of her family members present. Little Uncle Tan Emo entered the room, but she didn't immediately run over when she saw Wei Zhiqian. She stood a certain distance away from him between the door and the hospital bed. Why are you standing so far away? Wei Zhiqian had been sitting up reading a book. Now he put down his book, sat up straight, and stretched out his hand toward Tan Emo, saying, You only left yesterday, but you're already treating me like a stranger. Tan Emo was nervous, and her heart was beating extremely fast. She walked up to Wei Zhiqian and stood there obediently. Wei Zhiqian raised his eyebrows. Although Tan Emo had always been well dot behaved, she had never seemed as nervous as she was now, as if she had done something wrong. Wei Zhiqian could vaguely guess why she was acting like this. Little uncle, how is your injury coming along? Tan Emo asked. Quite well. The wound has healed very well, and even when I make large movements, it doesn't bleed. Wei Zhiqian's injury was still bandaged, and there was no way for him to show Tan Emo. At this time, Butler Zhou came in. Young master, it's time to change your bandages. Yesterday, he hadn't been on guard yet, so the doctor and nurse had seen that his injury had recovered unusually quickly. Although it had only been seen by two people, Wei Zhiqian still became cautious. Since it was now practically healed, the task of changing the bandage had been given to Butler Zhou. Even for the removal of the stitches, Wei Zhiqian had no plans to use outsiders. Butler Zhou cut the bandage, and Tan Emo reflexively stretched out her hand to touch the wound near Wei Zhiqian's shoulder. If she could send some more energy to Wei Zhiqian today, Wei Zhiqian would be all healed very soon. Just as her fingertips were about to touch his wound, her wrist was suddenly grasped by Wei Zhiqian. Tan Emo exclaimed, Little uncle. Wait a second. Don't touch it. Wei Zhiqian gave her a warning. The look in Wei Zhiqian's eyes was similar to when Tan Emo had occasionally been distracted when she was practicing calligraphy and she doodled and had been caught by Wei Zhiqian when she was a child. Tan Emo didn't dare to move. With her hands behind her back, she stood aside obediently with her head lowered like a student who has made a mistake. What are you doing standing there like that? I'm not punishing you. Wei Zhiqian patted the chair beside the bed and said, Come and sit. Oh, okay. Tan Emo sat down obediently. Butler Zhou changed Wei Zhiqian's bandage. Because the wound had healed well, there was no need to bandage it as tightly as yesterday. Otherwise, since the weather was hot, it would feel suffocating. Then Butler Zhou packed up his things and went out, leaving them alone. Don't do this again in the future. Wei Zhiqian looked serious. Little uncle, what do you mean? Tan Emo blinked her big eyes as she looked at Wei Zhiqian innocently. Don't play dumb with me. Wei Zhiqian raised his hand to flick the top of her head, but the thought of her flushed face during her high fever yesterday made him reluctant to act. Wei Zhiqian retracted his hand and simply said clearly, You wanted to touch my wound just now. Wasn't it because you wanted to continue to heal me? Little uncle, you, Tan Emo had guessed that Wei Zhiqian might have figured out her secret. But hearing him say it out in the open now, Tan Emo still paled in shock. Wei Zhiqian sighed and said, With so many coincidences together, how could I not figure it out? Every time you are around, no matter how stubborn a chronic illness is, it's cured. Tan Emo lowered her head, so he couldn't see her expression clearly. The part of her face that was visible looked extremely pale. Wei Zhiqian got up, walked over to her, squatted down, and raised his head slightly so that he could see her face. Were you afraid of being found out by me? What was she afraid of? Afraid of being used. Little uncle, do you think I am a monster? Tan Emo had tears in her eyes. She looked at Wei Zhiqian timidly and said, although my photographic memory is rare, 
there are so many geniuses in the world, and it isn't uncommon. But my ability to heal people without using any medical methods is very strange indeed. She whispered, this is different. Wei Zhiqian relaxed. It turned out that this was what she was afraid of. Wei Zhiqian chuckled while squeezing Tan Mo's small face. After being squeezed by him twice, Tan Mo's pale little face finally got a little color back. After one half of her face had been restored to color, Wei Zhiqian eagerly turned toward the other side and squeezed it too. Suddenly, Tan Mo's small face had a symmetrical blush, which made her look much more attractive. Tan Mo, Tan Mo stopped being worried. Wei Zhiqian didn't see her as a monster at all. She looked at Wei Zhiqian very resentfully. What was he doing squeezing her face? What's the matter? Wei Zhiqian raised his eyebrows. Actually, I've never told you about the patriarchs of the eight great clans. Tan Mo thought, do the patriarchs of the eight great clans have anything to do with her? What determines who becomes a patriarch of the eight great clans isn't capability. Wei Zhiqian maintained his squatting posture as he explained, it is determined by who the patriarch ability awakens in. Wei Zhiqian tilted his head. Tan Mo, unexpectedly, Wei Zhiqian would act cute out of the blue. The patriarchs have a variety of abilities. For example, Qin Mufeng has excellent eyesight, and he can see things miles away. I have excellent hearing that I can control myself. When I want to listen, I can use my abilities to hear things miles away, Wei Zhiqian said. What if the abilities awaken in someone who is mediocre, or if the abilities awaken in someone like Wei Kelly? Tan Mo couldn't help worrying. Wei Zhiqian was stunned for a second. He hadn't expected Tan Mo to think of this, rather than being pleasantly surprised because there were actually many people like her. It turned out that Wei Kelly's position in Tan Mo's heart was very low. For some reason, Wei Zhiqian felt very happy about this. It put him in a good mood. I don't know whether it is because a person who these abilities can awaken in can't be mediocre, or because only very exceptional people who can reach a certain level of excellence can awaken the abilities, but, in short, the eight great clans are lucky. Those who the abilities awaken in are very exceptional themselves and receive the most top-notch nurturing from their clans, so they never turn out to be that bad. But I would never think of you as a monster, since we are the same. Wei Zhiqian's eyes had a soft expression and his voice had gotten very gentle. We are the same. She was the same as Wei Zhiqian. This realization made Tan Mo overjoyed. You were worried that I would actually think of you as a monster. Wei Zhiqian was really curious about what Tan Mo was thinking in her little head. Chapter 82 you don't need to repay the favor like this you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 82 You don't need to repay the favor like this, so what can I worry about now? Tan Mo was finally able to relax. Wei Zhiqian sighed helplessly. He realized he had to be more attentive and protective of her from now on. Since she was so silly and so innocent, how could she not be bullied? Were you afraid that I would use your abilities and make you use them too much, so that they'd lose their potency? Wei Zhiqian asked. Obviously, this was important. Had she ever thought about it? Why should I be afraid of that? Little uncle wouldn't do anything to hurt me. Tan Mo tilted her head, and her mind was so pure that it could be seen through. She smiled at Wei Zhiqian and said, Little uncle didn't know anything about this until now and you've always been so good to me. When I was a six-year-old kid, what value did I have to you? Little uncle has always been so good to me, why should I suspect little uncle of any bad intentions? That would be too ungrateful. Not to mention little uncle would not do this. Little uncle has always treated me so well, I would be happy to repay the favor. You don't need to repay the favor like this, Wei Zhiqian said immediately, even a little angrily. Okay, I won't, Tan Mo answered. Seeing how innocent she was, Wei Zhiqian could only sigh helplessly and ask, how do you use your abilities? 
Do you need to have physical contact with people? Yes. Tan Emo nodded. Wei Zhiqian recalled how Tan Emo had treated the old madam's headaches. Do you have to put your hands on the other person's area of pain? Tan Emo wasn't afraid of being used by Wei Zhiqian. She trusted him completely. Since Wei Zhiqian didn't regard her as a monster, she finally had a person to tell the secret to that had been hidden in her heart for a long time. Tan Emo was happy to be able to share it with Wei Zhiqian. It works best when I touch the painful area. It's easier like that. But the day before yesterday, when I was treating you, I was afraid of being seen, so I just held your hand and transmitted it to the wound. When I was a child, I was too small so my power was limited, and I couldn't transmit it to anyone. As I've grown up, the energy that can be delivered has increased. In the future, unless it is a question of as a last resort, don't do this again. Wei Zhiqian stared into Tan Mo's eyes seriously and said, especially don't overdraw on your own ability. It can be too dangerous. This time, you had a fever because you overdrew on your abilities. If it was ever more serious, no one could know the consequences. My injury would have recovered under normal circumstances, but the speed would have been slower. If there is ever such an incident in the future, don't overdraw your powers by treating me. Just let me recover slowly, all right. Unexpectedly, Tan Emo became anxious when she heard what he said. Are you going to get hurt in the future? Wei Zhiqian was stunned. He didn't expect Tan Mo's focus to be on this. Wei Zhiqian chuckled a few times and said, I'm just making an example. How could I want to get injured? I don't know. No matter what, if you get injured like this in the future, I will still treat you with my special powers. It is better to heal quickly than to have it drag out and suffer for a long time, Tan Emo said, puffing out her cheeks. If you don't want me to overdot exhaust myself, then don't get hurt. Wei Zhiqian understood. No matter what, she still couldn't bear to have him get hurt. Okay, I promise you that I will do my best to not get hurt, Wei Zhiqian promised. However, you also have to promise me not to use your abilities in a careless manner. You don't want to be discovered, be no calm, all right, I know, Tan Emo said with a smile. Little uncle, I'm not stupid. I know that if this ability was discovered by unreliable people, I could be used. At that time, I might become a tool for their treatment. I might be captured and imprisoned. From morning to night, day after day, I would have to treat people and constantly deplete my abilities. If my abilities became overdrawn, and I became comatose or sick, I could be forcibly awakened by an injection and have to continue to transmit power. Or I might be taken away for experiments, for brain tests, body tests, or even surgical dissections. As Tan Emo said this, although she was still fine, Wei Zhiqian's face darkened, and there wasn't even the slightest bit of cheerfulness left on his face. Who would dare to do that? Wei Zhiqian gritted his teeth and clenched his fists. Just listening to Tan Emo talking about these possibilities, he felt as if he was about to lose it. A scene played in his mind. Tan Emo had been taken away and helplessly forced to give treatments every day. Her blood had been drawn and she had been tied to an operating table like a lab rat. Just thinking of this scene made Wei Zhiqian so enraged that he was about to explode. Little uncle. Tan Emo quickly wrapped Wei Zhiqian's clenched fist with both of her hands. She had originally been playing the pity card in order to make Wei Zhiqian feel distressed. Who knew Wei Zhiqian would have such a strong reaction? Tan Emo felt that in the future she shouldn't play the pity card with Wei Zhiqian. It seemed as if she only needed to stand in front of Wei Zhiqian, and Wei Zhiqian would dote on her no matter what. Just like her three brothers, who had always felt as if she was being bullied. The joints on Wei Zhiqian's fist were white because he was clenching so tightly. Tan Emo looked at him. She was afraid that if he used too much force, the bones could pierce the skin. Tan Emo rubbed his hand to make Wei Zhiqian relax and said, Little uncle, don't worry. I'm not stupid. It's because I know this that I've never told anyone. Even my parents and brothers don't know. 
you are the only one who knows my abilities. These words made Wei Zhiqian's fist loosen. He had guessed it, but he wasn't sure it was true. Even her closest family members didn't know about her ability. He was the only one. In this matter, he'd finally beaten Tan Mo's parents and brothers. It was a pity that he couldn't let them know. Wouldn't they be extremely jealous of him? Tan Mo took this opportunity to spread Wei Zhiqian's fingers out. She saw that his palm had been left with purple marks from his nails because he'd been making a fist with too much force. Tan Mo rubbed the marks from his nails and said, and I'm also very cautious. I don't usually help people I don't trust, lest I risk endangering myself. From the time I discovered this ability to the present, I have only cured headaches for the old madam and then this time I stopped the bleeding, relieved the pain, and sped up the healing for you. Tan Mo can't expose the fact that she had been reborn and was already remembering things even when she was a baby. I discovered that I have this ability because my mother told me that when she had just given birth to me, the surgical incision was still painful, but as long as I was next to her, the pain would ease up immediately. Little uncle, I'm not a foolish person, Tan Mo said. I just wanted you to get better soon. I didn't want you to be at risk. After you had the operation, the doctor said that there might be complications caused by infections. Chapter 83 you have to keep a distance from the opposite gender, understand? You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 83 You have to keep a distance from the opposite gender, understand? Little uncle, I was even worried that you would think I am selfish, Tan Mo muttered. You better be more selfish. Don't help anyone but your loved ones. Including him. I will be selfish. Tan Mo's smile looked very innocent at this time. I will only treat my parents and brothers, the old master, the old madam, little uncle's parents, and the little uncle, who are all my close relatives. Ever since I was young, none of the people I've helped have gone beyond this range. Seeing Tan Mo's sly smile, Wei Zhiqian shook his head helplessly and said, You have many excuses. Little uncle, your wound really doesn't hurt anymore. Tan Mo stretched out a hand and was tempted to touch Wei Zhiqian's bandage. She was quickly caught by Wei Zhiqian. What do you want to do? Let me have a look. I have to take a look at it to feel relieved. Tan Mo looked at Wei Zhiqian seriously. Didn't you see it when the bandages were changed just now? Wei Zhiqian raised his eyebrows and asked. My line of sight happened to be blocked by the butler, Tan Mo said as she pouted. Moreover, I was worried about your opinion of me before. I was scared and didn't even dare to look up, so how could I have seen your wound? Wei Zhiqian said helplessly, Butler Zhou bandaged me, so you'll have to take it apart if you want to see it. I will bandage it for you again afterward. Tan Mo thought to herself, she would give Wei Zhiqian some more energy so he wouldn't even need a bandage anymore. Do you know how to bandage it? Wei Zhiqian really couldn't imagine how Tan Mo would tie the bandage. She definitely didn't know how to do a bandage correctly. What's hard about it? I will definitely bandage it beautifully and tightly. Tan Mo tugged at the bandage and said, Little uncle, just let me take a look. Wei Zhiqian really had no other choice. He had to unbutton his hospital gown. Tan Mo had no intention of looking away at all. Why should she feel shy around her little uncle? Her clear black eyes stared as Wei Zhiqian unbuttoned his clothes. Her little uncle's hands were really beautiful. His hands were very thin, and with the movements of his fingers, the bones on the back of his hands protruded and disappeared from time to time. His fingers were thin and long, but they looked very powerful. Wei Zhiqian. This little girl was so bold at such a young age. Her eyes stared at him intently without any intention of looking away. Even if she was still young, she is a teenager, so she should know about avoiding such scenes. Wei Zhiqian stopped undressing and said helplessly, You have grown up now, so you need to keep a distance from the opposite gender, understand? Tan Mo didn't know why this topic had come up, but she nodded innocently. What did this mean? 
Are there any other boys undressing in front of you? Wei Zhiqian asked. If there were, he was going to be in big trouble. After thinking for a long time, Tan Mo asked, Do swimming lessons count? Wei Zhiqian. No, that doesn't count. Although, Wei Zhiqian felt that even for swimming lessons, attention still needed to be paid. Then there's no one. If someone undresses in front of me, wouldn't that person be a pervert? Tan Mo said. Wei Zhiqian. Why does he feel that he is like a pervert now? Wei Zhiqian turned his back to her and unbuttoned the rest of the buttons. He heard Tan Mo ask behind him, Little uncle, why are you turning your back to me? I don't want to be a pervert. Wei Zhiqian gritted his teeth. Tan Mo twisted around until she could see the side of Wei Zhiqian's face. Then how will you show me your wound later? Wei Zhiqian. We don't need to have so many qualms, Tan Mo said. Wei Zhiqian. Wei Zhiqian agreed with her, but this made him feel hypocritical. Even so, it still didn't feel appropriate to unbutton in front of the little girl. So Wei Zhiqian quickly unbuttoned the hospital gown, opened it, but did not take it off. As long as the wound could be exposed, it would be fine. Then he turned around. I'll get the scissors. When Tan Mo went to get the scissors, she asked, why hasn't the butler returned? He has been gone for a long time. Butler Zhou specially left the room so we could talk. Although Butler Zhou didn't know what Wei Zhiqian had planned to say to Tan Mo, he knew that Wei Zhiqian had important things that he wanted to talk to Tan Mo about. So far, no one could surpass Butler Zhou's keen observation and attentiveness. Butler Zhou doesn't know. Tan Mo returned with the scissors. Perhaps he's guessed it. Butler Zhou is very smart, but he didn't say anything. He knows that your affairs must be kept secret, Wei Zhiqian said. It can be regarded as him not knowing. Tan Mo was holding the scissors and had already touched the bandage. L.R.G. Wei Zhiqian held Tan Mo's hand and said, Can you really put the bandage back on for me? If it really doesn't work, I'll get the butler. Tan Mo was not worried at all. Wei Zhiqian. He thought, this little girl has been spoiled since she was a child, so how can she know how to do this? But with Butler Zhou, there was nothing to fear. Tan Mo cut the bandage with the scissors. The wound on Wei Zhiqian's shoulder was revealed. Is it still a little painful? Tan Mo knew that she had overdrawn her powers to heal him, but it hadn't been enough to eliminate all the pain for him in one go. Her abilities weren't at that level yet. Wei Zhiqian grabbed Tan Mo's outstretched hand and said, Want to treat me again? You're mostly healed, so I just need to use a little more power. This time, it's like a tickling, and there won't be any damage at all. Tan Mo's index finger and thumb made a gesture to show that it would be small. Moreover, your injury is almost healed and you can get discharged soon. I can help you get there quicker. If you leave the hospital sooner, you can find out why you were injured in the first place. Moreover, those who don't know the reason for your hospitalization and only know you were injured will think that you must stay in the hospital for a long time. If you get out earlier, you can take the enemy by surprise by pretending that the injury isn't healed yet while investigating secretly. It is much more convenient than investigating while recovering from the injury in the hospital. Wei Zhiqian had always known that Tan Mo was very smart. Since she could skip a grade at Jixia University, how can she be stupid? Later, Tan Mo didn't skip any more grades, not because her abilities made her unable to skip any more grades, but because Qin Muxiao didn't bother her anymore, and Tan Mo, a little lazy didn't want to go to school all day long then have to study after school. Even if Wei Zhiqian urged her to skip, it was useless. Tan Mo had the Tan family to protect her, and they wouldn't let her suffer no matter what. In their opinion, it was fine if Tan Mo didn't want to work super dot hard, because they would take care of her. The important thing for them was that she would come home every day after school, and she wouldn't be abducted by Wei Zhiqian again. No, Wei Zhiqian refused. You just had a fever yesterday and your body hasn't fully recovered today. 
You can't exhaust yourself anymore. Chapter 84 Long time, no see. Your abs seem quite well, developed. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 84 Long time, no see. Your abs seem quite well, developed. Little uncle. She knew her own situation very well, and it really didn't matter. What? Now that you've grown up, your little uncle's words no longer have any authority. Wei Zhiqian said solemnly, I had already planned to be discharged today. I am in a very good condition now, and I can move around freely. Don't worry. Don't you believe me? I believe you. Tan Emo had to give up. Wei Zhiqian was holding her hand, and, as long as there was contact, she could still pass on the healing powers. But Wei Zhiqian might find out and get angry. Tan Emo dared not do this. Wei Zhiqian looked at his cut dot up bandage and said, You said you would bandage it for me. Don't worry, I'll be able to bandage it well. Tan Emo immediately went to get a new bandage and wrapped it around Wei Zhiqian but she really hadn't ever bandaged anyone before. Her master had never suffered physical trauma in her previous life. All the injuries had been internal injuries, so she had never figured out the method of bandaging. As a little snow fairy, she hadn't needed to know how to bandage either. At this moment, she could only wing it. Fortunately, Wei Zhiqian's wound no longer hurt so much. Tan Emo bandaged Wei Zhiqian tightly and asked, does it hurt? No, it doesn't hurt, Wei Zhiqian replied patiently. Finally, after the bandage had been wrapped around him several times, Tan Emo tied a knot. She was afraid that the knot would loosen easily. All right. Tan Emo touched her chin and looked at it with satisfaction. I think it's quite good. Wei Zhiqian looked down and saw that the bandage was wrapped a bit too tight even though there was air dot conditioning in the ward, Wei Zhiqian was afraid that he would get a rash. At this time, there was a knock on the door and butler Zhou called out, Young master. Come in, Wei Zhiqian said as he refastened his buttons. When butler Zhou came in, he happened to see Wei Zhiqian with the thick bandage that had been re-wrapped by Tan Emo. Young master, this bandage, he thought, it looked a little different from when he'd left. What had happened in such a short time? I bandaged it, Tan Emo boasted. I just wanted to see how well his wound was recovering, and then I bandaged it for him again. Butler Zhou, is my bandaging method good? Butler Zhou nodded without hesitation and said, very good. This is the first time that you have ever bandaged, but you can already do so at such a good level. You must really be a genius who can do everything. Wei Zhiqian. Whose butler is he anyway? Young master, you are being discharged from the hospital. We can go now. It turned out that Butler Zhou hadn't stayed away simply to give time for Wei Zhiqian to talk to Tan Emo, but he had also completed the discharge procedures. Wei Zhiqian nodded, then went and changed into a loose T. shirt. As the three of them came out of the ward, they ran into Qin Mufeng, Zhao Gushen, Han Zhuli, Yan Beicheng, Chu Zhaoyang, Qi Qingji, and Wei Ziki in the corridor. Wei Zhiqian was taken aback. How come the seven of you, weren't these seven people going to school abroad? Why were they here? And they all showed up at the same time. We heard that you were injured, so we all booked the earliest flights back. Qin Mufeng saw Butler Zhou carrying his luggage and said, you're being discharged so soon. It was a fairly minor injury so of course I'm leaving the hospital. If you guys had come later, my wounds would have been healed. Wei Zhiqian smiled. Qin Mufeng and the others really didn't know how Wei Zhiqian had been injured, only that he had been wounded by a gun. Knowing this detail was already very remarkable. After all, very few people even in the Wei family knew that Wei Zhiqian had suffered a gunshot wound. When they heard about the gunshot wound, they knew it was very serious. They hurriedly booked flights to return to China and flew home immediately. Unexpectedly, they now saw that Wei Zhiqian really seemed to be fine. 
They immediately relaxed and breathed sighs of relief. So what if they had made the trip for nothing? The important thing was that Wei Zhiqian was okay. It didn't matter how many trips they made in vain. I was scared to death when I heard that you were injured, Zhao Gushen said as he visibly relaxed. Then his eyes fell on Wei Zhiqian's chest. Long time, no see. Your abs seem quite well dot developed, Wei Zhiqian. Because Tan Emo had tied the bandage too thick, even though the T-dot shirt was loose, it couldn't be concealed. Are you really all right? Qi Chengji asked a little uneasily. I'm really okay. Wei Zhiqian moved his hands and feet. Look at me. Don't I seem okay? Well, it's good that you're okay. Yen Beiching replied, and everyone walked out of the hospital. When do you guys plan to go back? Wei Zhiqian asked. It's rare that we get to come back, so we aren't in a rush to leave, Han Zhuli said. By the way, I'm going to check on my studies. Qin Mufeng smiled. That girl is clamoring that she wants to get admitted to Beijing University. She has been studying hard recently. It's nice for her to have a friend like Tan Emo, since at least she can make Qin Mai more motivated. Dot Dong Hanbai had said that he must find an opportunity to invite Tan Emo to the Qin mansion for a good meal. Otherwise, with Qin Mai's carefree personality, how could she have such a clear goal? Dong Hanbai was very happy. Wei Zhiqian wanted to go home to deal with his injury at this time, so Tan Emo didn't go with him. Wei Zhiqian took Tan Emo back to the Tan family's home. The car stopped at the door of the Tan family's house. Tan Emo didn't rush to get out of the car. She turned to Wei Zhiqian and said, Little uncle, if the wound hurts, you must tell me. I had a fever because of my overdoing things, but that was simply because you had been hurt too badly before. In your current situation, it won't consume too much energy. You have to trust me. I see. Wei Zhiqian raised his hand to touch Tan Mo's head. You have to believe me too. I'm really fine. I'm afraid that your wound will still hurt, but if you can bear it, you will bear it. Tan Mo's little face was full of worry for Wei Zhiqian. If you were going to recuperate in the hospital, I wouldn't worry. But I know that you are going to investigate what happened now, and there are still many things to do. You won't be able to rest well. If you drag things out, you will continue to suffer. Don't I have you? Wei Zhiqian chuckled lightly. His voice was no longer as chirpy as it had been when he was a young boy. Now it had become warm and magnetic. Especially when he was laughing, his voice became more and more charming. The chuckle that had just come out of his throat was like a jade falling into the shallows, hitting the pebbles under the clear water. Tan Emo thought that if it hadn't been for Wei Zhiqian's sharp tongue, with his suaveness, he surely would have had a girlfriend by now. Soon, she heard Wei Zhiqian say, if my injury really has repercussions, I will find you to treat it at that time. Even my grandma's chronic headaches that continued for so many years could be cured, so wouldn't my injuries be a piece of cake. Chapter 85 Learn how to identify 8 trash you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 85 Learn how to identify 8 trash Tan Emo realized that he was right. Because she had been so nervous about Wei Zhiqian's injury, she had forgotten. Even if Wei Zhiqian's injury really had long dot term effects, she could still cure it. Now Tan Emo felt completely relieved. She grabbed Wei Zhiqian's arm and asked, Little uncle, will you come to my graduation ceremony? Tan Emo has long regarded Wei Zhiqian as her closest family member. If you have time, could you please come? If you're busy, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter, Tan Emo hurriedly added. But the gleam of expectation in her eyes made him reluctant to refuse her. Of course I want to go. After receiving an affirmative reply, Tan Emo smiled happily. Okay, now I'm going home. Little uncle, even if you want to investigate what happened to you, you must also pay attention to your body. Wei Zhiqian watched Tan Emo enter the gate of the small garden outside the Tan family's villa before allowing the driver to leave. 
Tanimo walked through the small garden, and, just when she was about to enter the house, she saw Tan Jinsheng and Tan Jini coming out. Second brother, third brother, where are you going? Tan Emo asked casually. They were very excited when they saw her. Mo Mo, we were on our way to find you. Tan Jinsheng took Tan Emo by the shoulders and led her down the steps. Let's go out and play. Now. Tan Emo asked. She was confused. Why have you and second brother come back suddenly instead of going to class? And you want to take me out to play? Ha, 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 Tan Jini laughed. He couldn't help but envy his oldest brother's intelligence right at this minute. He was an artistic person, and he didn't know how to lie. Neither of us have class today, so it's okay. Tan Tan Jinsheng walked up to Tan Mo's other side. They seemed as if they were guarding Tan Mo, yet also seemed to be leading Tan Mo somewhere. Where's my oldest brother? If her second and third brothers were going out to play with her without her big brother, wouldn't her big brother be unhappy? Afterward, he might want to settle accounts with the second and third brothers. We told him we were going. Tan Jini laughed awkwardly with a shifty look in his eyes. He didn't dare look at Tan Emo, he agreed, so don't worry. What is going on? Tan Emo stopped. She shook off the arms of her two older brothers and looked at them with her hands on her waist. Don't try to lie to me. My older brother wouldn't agree to only the two of you taking me out. If they were to go somewhere, it would always be the three brothers going together. There was never one person missing. Her three brothers had always fought among themselves for her affection, so Tan Emo realized that something was amiss. Is there someone at home? Tan Emo looked at the expressions of her second and third brothers. You guys want to lure me out so I won't see the guest. Tan Jinsheng looked at Tan Jini with a troubled expression although Tan Jini didn't answer, he seemed to have the words, my sister is a genius, plastered on his forehead. Tan Jinsheng was speechless. Could they have been any more obvious? Are Yuan Keqing or Wei Kelly here? Besides Wei Zhiqian, these two people are the only ones her brothers wouldn't want her to see. But Wei Zhiqian was different from the other two. The brothers were afraid that she would be snatched away by Wei Zhiqian someday, so they always acted like he was an enemy who had come to visit. But they wouldn't react the way they were now. It can't be that both of them are here, am I right? If only one of them was here, it wouldn't be enough for them to want to lure her away. In reality, Tan Jinxi was at home, and it was true that he had agreed to let Tan Jinxing and Tan Jini take Tan Emo out to play. It was purely because Wei Kelly and Yuan Keqing were disgusting people who were at their home. They had just arrived. Wei Kelly used to be a good friend of Tan Mo's, but now he has changed and has a good relationship with Yuan Keqing. And no matter how they looked at it, these two people seemed like partners in crime. Although Tan Emo had started to ignore Wei Kelly long ago, the three brothers were still worried that Tan Emo would feel uncomfortable seeing them. These two people should stay away from their home. Are they here together? After seeing their reactions, Tan Emo knew that she had guessed correctly, and she clapped her hands merrily. Great, I haven't seen them for a long time. What do you mean a long time? You just finished the college entrance examination. Tan Jinsheng followed Tan Emo up the steps. Didn't you see them during the exam? Garbage sorting started recently, Tan Emo said as she walked up to the door. Dot, why are we talking about this? Tan Jinsheng asked quizzically. Weren't they talking about Wei Kelly and Yuan Keqing? Look at them more closely and learn how to identify trash, Tan Emo said while pressing her index finger on the fingerprint lock. Tan Jinsheng. Was his sister already so sharp dot tongued? Tan Jini. He almost felt like crying. His sister was being ruined by Wei Zhiqian. The two felt sad, yet comforted at the same time. They were sad that Tan Emo had learned bad things from Wei Zhiqian. This showed that Tan Emo spent too much time with Wei Zhiqian and that meant that Tan Emo spent less time with them. 
It had turned out that before they even knew it, Wei Zhiqian had taken so much of their time with Tan Emo. How sad. But it was comforting that Tan Emo obviously had little affection for Wei Kelly left, otherwise, how could she associate him with Trash? They were relieved that Tan Emo could be so ruthless toward Trash like them. Tan Emo turned the doorknob and opened the door. She saw four pairs of shoes in the hallway. It seemed that Su Mingjing and Li Xiangrong were also here. Tan Emo changed into her slippers, put her outdoor shoes away, and went inside. As if afraid that Tan Emo was going to be bullied, Tan Jinsheng and Tan Jini quickly changed their shoes and followed Tan Emo into the room. As she entered the living room, she saw that Li Xiangrong and Su Mingjing were indeed also there. Tan Emo greeted them in a well-behaved manner, Brother Kelly, Kaching. Su Mingjin felt distressed when she saw this. She had just been sabotaged by Yuan Kaching during the college entrance examination, and now she still had to say hello to Yuan Kaching as if nothing had happened. Wasn't Tan Emo enduring all these grievances because of her? Su Mingjin really hated herself at this moment. She, saying that they were all family and that she was sisters with Su Mingjing, had forced Tan Emo to play with Yuan Kaching ever since she'd been a child. It was because of this that Tan Emo had endured all kinds of grievances and still had to tolerate Yuan Kaching. After Tan Mo's exam, Wei Zhiqian had been injured and Tan Emo herself had been hospitalized with a fever. That was why Su Mingjin hadn't had the time to go find Yuan Kaching to settle accounts. She finally had had some free time today, so Su Mingjin had wanted to talk to Su Mingjing. If Su Mingjing still put up a fight and refused to provide any substantive solution, then she would completely sever ties with Su Mingjing. They simply wouldn't be sisters anymore, and she wouldn't let Yuan Kaching interact with Tan Emo at all. Because of Yuan Kaching's behavior, Yuan Zhengwen's behavior, and the financial support issues for old Madam Su, her relationship with Su Mingjing was almost estranged anyway. Because she had refused to back down, Yuan Zhengwen now had to financially support old Madam Su for the next seven years. Chapter 86 This girl dares to say anything you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 86 This girl dares to say anything this account had only been settled last year. The Tan family had paid last year, so this year it was the Yuan family's turn. Su Mingjin had been absolutely unwilling to give in. She didn't want to pay a single penny when it wasn't her turn. In the past, when it had been the Yuan family's turn to pay, Su Mingjing had often come to beg her for help, but now it was useless for her to try. Old Madam Su doted on Su Mingjing so much, so Su Mingjing can't really abandon Old Madam, right? They have no choice but to follow Su Mingjin's proposal. The two families taking turns financially supporting Old Madam Su. Unexpectedly, before Su Mingjin had had a chance to go see Su Mingjing today, Su Mingjing had come to her house with Yuan Kaching. Unexpectedly, Li Xiangrong had also come with Wei Kelly. She really didn't know if this had been a coincidence or if the two families had agreed on this beforehand. However, Su Mingjin still believed that Li Xiangrong wouldn't join hands with Su Mingjing to spite her. There was a high probability it was a coincidence. Because of the presence of Li Xiangrong and Wei Kelly, Su Mingjin couldn't confront Su Mingjing directly. After all, to really settle the account, she would have to tell them about Wei Zhiqian's injury. She doesn't know if Li Xiangrong knows about it or not, but Li Xiangrong cannot find out from her. As for Su Mingjing, she needs to say that Yuan Keqing deliberately said it to deceive Tan Emo. Su Mingjin was determined to settle accounts, with Yuan Keqing so naturally she took all these factors into consideration. She would have to wait for Li Xiangrong to take Wei Kelly and leave. Then Su Mingjin could talk to Su Mingjing and Yuan Keqing. Unexpectedly, Tan Emo came back not long after the four people had sat down. Seeing how well dot behaved Tan Emo was being and how she smiled at Yuan Keqing, Su Mingjin felt as if a knife was cutting at her heart. Haven't they finished with the exams? That's why I came with Kelly for a visit. Li Xiangrong obviously had no idea what Yuan Keqing had done. 
Unexpectedly, I encountered Mrs. Yuan at the door. After the last exam, I didn't see you leaving so I had to leave first, Wei Kelly said. I haven't had time to ask you, what did you think of the exam? By the way, sister, what school is Mo Mo's first choice? Su Mingjing tilted her head and asked Su Mingjin. Su Mingjin watched her reaction. It seemed as if she also had no idea what Yuan Keqing had done. Su Mingjin didn't know what to think about it. Under everyone's gaze, Tan Mo kept her head down. Su Mingjing felt baffled. Why wasn't Tan Mo making eye contact with anyone? And then Tan Mo's shoulders suddenly shook. Next they heard her sobbing in quiet but clear way. When she looked up again, there were teardrops as big as beans streaming down her face. Mo Mo, what's wrong with you? Li Xiangrong asked anxiously. Regarding Tan Mo and Wei Kelly, Li Xiangrong had made some calculations. However, her friendship with Su Mingjin was sincere, and she had genuine affection for Tan Mo. Her selfish calculations aside, Tan Mo was a beloved child. After all, this was a child she had watched grow up ever since she'd been born. At this time, her anxiety and concern were sincere. I, Tan Mo sobbed as she said, I didn't do well on the exam. How come? Su Mingjing was also baffled. Although the relationship between her and Su Mingjin had become a bit estranged over the years, it hadn't reached the point where she couldn't stand Tan Mo enjoying success. She also envied Su Mingjin for having such a good life. She'd married well, her children were outstanding, and Tan Mo was even able to skip grades. She never expected that Tan Mo would do badly on the college entrance examination. I bombed the last exam. Tan Mo acted as if she was becoming more and more sad when she thought about it. She stopped sobbing and cried out loudly. I couldn't concentrate on answering the questions and answered the questions randomly. The last questions I couldn't even finish. I had to hand in the exam ahead of time. Why is that? Li Xiangrong looked at Tan Mo anxiously, then at Su Mingjin. Mo Mo has always done very well, and she always gets the first place in the Jixia Academy. I have never worried about Mo Mo's college entrance examinations. How come you suddenly couldn't concentrate during the exam? Because Keqing, Tan Mo cried and said. Yuan Keqing's expression changed. Was Tan Mo going to say it? Butler Zhou had clearly sent someone to warn her not to spread word about Wei Zhiqian's injury. Her only purpose had been to sabotage Tan Mo's exam. That was the only reason why she had done it. Since Butler Zhou had warned her, she'd immediately agreed. She'd kept her mouth shut and didn't say anything. But now, Tan Mo actually wanted to say it. How could she dare to? The Wei family attached so much importance to this matter at this time, and no matter how much they liked Tan Mo, they wouldn't allow Tan Mo to sabotage their plan, right? Moreover, if Tan Mo does something so stupid, will the Wei family continue to like Tan Mo in the future? She knew that Su Mingjin must know what she had done. But she doesn't care. She just came to see Tan Mo make a fool of herself. The relationship between them and Su Mingjin has become much worse than before. While thinking about all of this, she heard Tan Mo say, because Keqing called me before the exam, and as I was worried that it could be something serious, I answered the call. Then she told me that my little uncle was injured very badly and was on the brink of death. My little uncle has doted on me so much ever since I was a child. After I heard this news, how could I still take the exam with peace of mind? While answering the questions, all I could think about was my little uncle's serious injury. What would I do if I couldn't see him anymore? In the car, Wei Zhiqian's eyes twitched. This girl dares to say anything. However, Tan Mo might have really thought about this at the time. That's why she'd hurriedly handed in the exam and run out, just to be able to see him as soon as possible. Thinking of this, Wei Zhiqian's heart felt warm as well as distressed. This silly girl. 
Despite knowing that Yuan Keqing probably exaggerated and lied to her, she still turned in the exam ahead of time. Her compassion was so sincere. As for Tan Mo revealing his injury, it didn't matter. The Wei family was no longer keeping it a secret anyway. Moreover, Wei Zhiqian kept feeling that Tan Mo had another trick up her sleeve, and she wouldn't reveal word of his injury that easily if she didn't have an ulterior motive. I was so worried that I didn't even bother to answer the questions, Tan Mo cried and continued. I thought that even if I had all the time in the world, I wouldn't be able to answer many questions, so I just stopped answering and handed in the exam in advance. Tan Mo cried very convincingly and miserably. Even the Tan family's three brothers and Su Mingjin couldn't help but feel worried about her. Could it be that when Tan Mo said before that she had completed the exam and checked the questions before handing it in had been only to comfort them? The expressions of all four of them became anxious and sad. When Yuan Keqing saw this, she was delighted. Tan Mo might know how to put on a show, but the expressions of Su Mingjin and the three brothers of the Tan family couldn't be faked. They have always cared about Tan Mo very deeply. Now Yuan Keqing finally felt assured. Tan Mo will have to repeat the grade or go to another school. No matter what, she can't get into Beijing University. I bombed on my last exam, so my grades will probably be very poor, Tan Mo cried as she said. I originally wanted to apply to Beijing University, but now I don't know what to do. Maybe I will need to repeat the grade. Chapter 87 Turn around and go back to the Tan family's house you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 87 Turn around and go back to the Tan family's house Li Xiangrong felt that she was in a real dilemma. She didn't know whether to comfort Tan Mo or to ask about Wei Zhiqian's injury first. She had heard that Wei Zhiqian had been hospitalized, but the elders had not allowed her to visit. So she still didn't know what Wei Zhiqian's situation was. After weighing the options, Li Xiangrong asked, Mo Mo, what is Zhiqian's situation now? My little uncle is okay. Yuan Keqing lied to me. Tan Mo wiped her tears but continued crying as she said, I don't know why Yuan Keqing did this to me. Tan Mo had never called her by her full name before. Su Ming Jing, Li Xiangrong, and Wei Kelly have always heard Tan Mo affectionately call her Keqing in the past. It was evident that Tan Mo was really angry this time. Wei Kelly felt sorry for Tan Mo, but he couldn't help but also feel relief. Judging from Tan Mo's reaction, she probably really bombed on the test. And, because of this, Tan Mo would probably have to repeat the year and remain a year behind him, instead of going to Beijing University at the same time as he did. Tan Mo was still a step behind him after all. After I finished the exam, I hurried to find my little uncle. However, my little uncle was only feeling a bit unwell, so he had gone to see the doctor. There was no injury at all, let alone any serious injuries. He was still alive and kicking. As she spoke, Tan Mo's voice became louder and louder, as if to express her resentment. Wei Zhiqian. Turn around and go back to the Tan family's house, Wei Zhiqian said to his driver. Yes, sir. Impossible. Yuan Keqing's expression had changed and she said, Wei Zhiqian was injured, and he was seriously injured. I didn't lie to you. Tan Mo shook her head sadly and said, Keqing, have I treated you badly? Are you dissatisfied with our family so you want to sabotage the college entrance examination which is so important to me? The college entrance examination is an important turning point in people's lives. Why did you do this to me? Why did you lie to me? I never knew that you actually hated me so much. You hate me so much that you want to ruin my life. Tan Mo clutched her chest and said, I always thought that we had a very good relationship. You used to always ask me for things. I gave you whatever you liked. Otherwise, I would have been blamed for not being generous. I always said to myself that you are my sister, so giving you things was natural. If I had to give you my stuff, then so be it. I have never refused you or felt dissatisfied with you. 
Tanimo sniffed some more and said, Could it be that you wanted the first doll my little uncle gave me and I wouldn't give it to you, so you were angry, and you've held a grudge until now? Or is it because I went to old Madame Wei's birthday banquet and my little uncle didn't invite you, so my mother didn't dare to take you there for fear of being impolite and offending others? Is this why you held a grudge? Or, was it because you resented me for skipping grades and not waiting for you? You wanted me to wait for you to take the college entrance examination together. Tan Imo shook her head and said, I don't understand why are you doing this to me. Li Xiangrong and Wei Kelly looked at Yuan Keqing at the same time. Wei Kelly was really staring at her, his mind a mixture of ambivalent emotions. How many things happened between Tan Imo and Yuan Keqing? Is Yuan Keqing really like Tan Imo says she is? Keqing, even if I entered university earlier than you, I wouldn't feel smug and arrogant. Tan Imo cried with a distressed expression on her face as she appeared to be thinking hard. Or, do you think your family has always been inferior to mine, and that makes you unhappy? But none of this is my fault. My father is capable, and it's not like I can make him become less capable. My parents and my brothers love me very much. They've always given me everything I wanted no matter what. I don't want them to be sad so I never refuse what they give to me. I'm smart. I learn everything quickly at a glance. I can't force myself to forget what I've learned and pretend that I haven't learned it. Tan Imo spoke in a low voice with a distressed expression. I can't change these things. The three Tan family brothers also sighed with distress. M.O.M.O. really has no control over her own excellence, Tan Jinchi echoed his sister's sentiments. We have always insisted on doting on M.O.M.O., and she has nothing to do with it, Tan Jinxing said with emotion. M.O.M.O. is considerate, and so she lets us pamper her. Tan Jini nodded repeatedly and said, M.O.M.O. is very low dot key and never shows off, but you still get so jealous of her. What did M.O.M.O. do wrong? Yuan Keqing. You siblings are showing off by feigning modesty. Even though you lied to me this time, I still don't blame you. I can only blame myself for not concentrating on the exam. I failed the exam and I can't blame anyone else, Tan Imo said with a pale face. Furthermore, you are my younger cousin. How could I blame my younger cousin? I just want to know. Keqing, why do you hate me so much? So much that you had to lie to ruin my college entrance examination. Tan Mo's watery eyes were filled with puzzlement and anguish. I didn't lie to you. I didn't lie to my cousin. Yuan Keqing explained to everyone in a panic. She looked at Wei Kelly first, then at Su Mingjing and Su Mingjin. Tan Mo sniffed while watching. It could be seen that Wei Kelly was the most important person in Yuan Keqing's heart, even ranked ahead of Su Mingjing. Wei Zhiqian had been really injured, seriously injured. This is what I heard Butler Zhou say with my own ears. Yuan Keqing couldn't be bothered with Butler Zhou's warning now. She can't be discredited by Tan Mo as a liar. After this, who would believe a word she said? She can't be discredited in front of Li Xiangrong and Wei Kelly. In Yuan Keqing's eyes, Wei Kelly is more important than anyone. Furthermore, Butler Zhou came to warn me and told me not to speak out about it, Yuan Keqing hurriedly explained. If it was a lie, why would Butler Zhou come to warn me to be quiet? Besides, I know Wei Zhiqian was seriously injured. Butler Zhou told me not to leak word of it. Since you were warned not to speak out, then why are you revealing it all right now? Tan Imo had stopped crying, but her eyelashes were soaked with tears, so her eyelashes seemed to have just been brushed with mascara. With her black, curly eyelashes, red eyes, and red nose, she looked very pitiful. I guess we can't let you know about anything that needs to be kept secret in the future, because we don't know how many people you will tell afterward. Tan Imo spoke while maintaining an aggrieved expression. Yuan Keqing was now fuming with rage. Tan Imo was clearly the one lying, so why was she so acting so aggrieved? Wei Zhiqian's injury had already been revealed, 
so Su Mingxin didn't care whether Li Xiangrong and Wei Kelly were present. However, she cooperated with Tan Emo in asserting that Wei Zhiqian wasn't injured badly and asked Yuan Keqing, Keqing, why did you sabotage Emo Mo's college entrance examination? Why did you lie to her by saying that Zhiqian was injured? You clearly know how good Emo Emo and Zhiqian's relationship is. After she heard about this, of course she wouldn't be able to take the exam with any peace of mind, but you still did it. Why, dot? Chapter 88 You suspect that MOMO is lying you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 88 You suspect that MOMO is lying, what did our family ever do to you? Su Mingjin clutched her chest and said, I am absolutely confident that I have been very good to you as your aunt. As long as I can remember, whatever we had, you also had a share. There have only been two exceptions that I can remember. One was the invitation to the birthday party and the other was the place in Jixia Academy. I couldn't get these for you because it was beyond my abilities. Except for these two incidents, if there were other incidents where I made you aggrieved, please tell me. If you were dissatisfied with me, you can come at me. How dare you harm MOMO? If it hadn't been for what MOMO said just now, I wouldn't even know that you used to bully MOMO like this. She hadn't told us anything. I always told my children to get along well with you, but I didn't know how much this has caused MOMO to suffer. Sister, there must be some misunderstanding here. Su Mingjing's palms were feeling a little sweaty. I can't believe Keqing would hurt MOMO. Then you mean MOMO has lied? Su Mingjin asked back unceremoniously. No, I didn't mean that. Su Mingjing licked her lips anxiously and said, MOMO is a good girl, and so is Keqing, so there must be a misunderstanding somewhere in this story. I still have the record of the phone call Keqing made to me just before I entered the examination room. Tan Emo took out her phone, found the call record, and showed it to Su Mingjing. With her eyes looking bloodshot, she said slowly and sadly, Aunt, I didn't lie. Tan Jinchi hugged Tan Emo and said in a forceful voice, My sister is obviously the victim here, but now she is suspected of lying. How ridiculous! Tan Jini said sarcastically with tears in his eyes, Are you really our dear aunt? Artistic people were always so sentimental. I feel sympathy for my mother and MOMO, Tan Jinxing said loudly. I didn't mean to doubt MOMO. Su Mingjing emphasized that she was just saying that there must be a misunderstanding in the situation. How did it become her suspecting Tan Emo of lying? Madam Yuan, I'm an outsider, so I shouldn't say too much, Li Xiangrong said from the sidelines. But I also have to say, since you just said that Yuan Keqing hasn't harmed Emo Emo, doesn't that mean that one of them is lying? In your eyes, since it's impossible for Yuan Keqing to lie, who is the one who lied? Wouldn't it be MOMO? You suspect that MOMO is lying. The call log is displayed here. Yuan Keqing called MOMO before she entered the examination room. Su Mingjin pointed at the phone with trembling fingers. Was there anything that couldn't wait until the exam is over? Why does she have to call MOMO to tell her anything before such an important exam? Whether it was a happy event or an unfortunate event, it will affect her state of mind when taking the exam. Doesn't she realize that? I didn't mean to harm my cousin. Yuan Keqing saw that it was impossible to lie about the phone call, so she said innocently, it was precisely because I knew that Wei Zhiqian was very important to my cousin that I told my cousin about it the moment that I heard the news. What's more, my cousin is so smart that she can skip grades. She can take the college entrance examination at the age of 15. I thought, the college entrance examination certainly wouldn't be difficult for my cousin, so how could this phone call affect my cousin? If my cousin finished the exam and found out that I knew Wei Zhiqian had been injured but didn't tell her in time, she might be even more angry. Between the exam and Wei Zhiqian's injury, I'm certain my cousin would think that Wei Zhiqian's injury was more important. Yuan Keqing had put Tan Emo in a dilemma. 
If Tan and Mo denied this, word of this matter would be passed to the Wei family through Wei Kelly. Since Wei Zhiqian had been so kind to Tan and Mo over the years, wouldn't she seem utterly ungrateful? How could the Wei family not be displeased with Tan and Mo? Thinking that Wei Zhiqian is very important to my cousin, I also wanted to tell my cousin as soon as possible out of good intentions. I didn't think of anything else. I didn't expect that this would affect my cousin's exam and make her screw up the exam. Yuan Keqing lowered her head and said with feigned guilt, I'm sorry, I really didn't know. I originally did it out of good intentions. I understand that my cousin now blames me for ruining her exam, and I understand that my aunt is angry with me. You too should be angry because I did something wrong. Yuan Keqing's face was pale and tears welled up in her eyes. I apologize to my cousin. If I could go back in time, I would definitely not have called my cousin. But I will never admit that I did it on purpose to screw up her exam results. My aunt has been so good to me ever since I was a child, and how could I repay all her favors with malice? Aunt, cousin, you can't think of me so badly. Your words make me very sad. Yuan Keqing covered her mouth and couldn't stop crying. The sight of this made the three Tan family brothers nauseous. Tan Jini said, Brother, I want to vomit. Su Mingjin was trembling with anger. She'd never realized that Yuan Keqing was so shameless. Cousin, Tan Mo addressed Yuan Keqing the same way she had addressed her, you said that you didn't expect that I would screw up the exam. So, if before the exam, you heard someone tell you that your father was injured and dying and if you didn't go right away you might not see him one last time, could you take the exam with peace of mind? M-O-M-O, -O, Su Mingjing frowned in disapproval. How can you curse your uncle like this? So, was this cursing? Tan M-O immediately turned to Yuan Keqing and said, Cousin, it doesn't matter if you ruined my exam. Anyway, I'm still young. It doesn't matter if I take the exam again next year. Yuan Keqing. Why do these words make her so angry? But you can't curse little uncle just to harm me. Tan Mo's little face was flushed now. Dot Yuan Keqing was very shocked. I didn't. How can she blabber such nonsense? If word of this reached Wei Zhiqian's ears, won't she be doomed? What's more, there were Wei family members present. Wei Kelly might not say it, but Li Xiangrong had never liked her. What if she spread stories about her after all this? I never cursed Wei Zhiqian. Yuan Keqing panicked. She said, Cousin, even if you are angry with me, you can't wrong me like this. My little uncle is obviously okay, uninjured, healthy, and well, but you called me to tell me that he had been seriously injured and that he was on the brink of death. What else could that be besides cursing him? At that time, I told you that it didn't matter if you didn't want me to do well on the exam, but you can't joke about my little uncle's health. This was the first time that Tan Mo had been so angry, and the first time her voice had sounded so tough. It was enough to make people see Tan Mo's anger. Wei Zhiqian was injured. Yuan Keqing didn't believe Tan Mo was speaking the truth. Tan Mo was refusing to admit what had happened because she wanted to frame her. If you won't admit it, we can go to the hospital to see, Yuan Keqing said, I didn't lie. Chapter 89 Sever Ties You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio Chapter 89 Sever Ties Yuan Keqing turned around and said to Li Xiangrong, Aunt, you must know about Wei Zhiqian's hospitalization. This, Li Xiangrong hesitated. At this time, the doorbell rang. Auntie Guo quickly went to see who was at the door. The next thing they heard was Auntie Guo's surprised voice saying, Madam, young Master Wei is at the door. You don't need to go to the hospital now. Tan Jinsheng sneered derisively. Auntie Guo quickly opened the door for Wei Zhiqian. Su Mingjin got up and went to the door. Li Xiangrong went also with Wei Kelly. Su Mingjing and Yuan Keqing couldn't just stand by and watch. Therefore, they also went to the door. Yuan Keqing stood behind Su Mingjing. 
she wished she could dig a hole in the ground to hide in so that she wouldn't be seen by Wei Zhiqian. Why had Wei Zhiqian come? This doesn't seem right. From Butler Zhou's reaction, Wei Zhiqian had obviously been injured very badly. He had been undergoing an operation in the hospital the day before yesterday. Everything else aside, it takes time to recover from an operation. It's impossible that he would be discharged today. What exactly was going on? Li Xiangrong was also baffled. She had known that Wei Zhiqian was hospitalized, but she didn't know about anything else. It wasn't clear whether it was because of injury or illness. He had just been hospitalized the day before yesterday. Now he'd come out today. Was this some sort of joke? Maybe he hadn't been either injured or sick. What is Wei Zhiqian up to? Just as she was thinking about it, Wei Zhiqian came in with Butler Zhou following closely behind him. From Wei Zhiqian's appearance, it didn't look as if he had been injured. There were no signs of any injury at all. Not to mention Yuan Keqing and others who didn't know about the situation, even Su Mingzhen, who had seen Wei Zhiqian's pale face when he had been pushed out of the operating room by a nurse, and the three brothers of the Tan family, who had seen him wearing bandages and a hospital gown, saw no trace of any injury on Wei Zhiqian's body. If even the Tan family couldn't tell that he'd been injured, it was no wonder that other people couldn't tell either. Little Uncle Tan Emo exclaimed in surprise as she was about to throw herself into Wei Zhiqian's arms. Unexpectedly, just as she ran two steps toward Wei Zhiqian, she was stopped by Tan Jinqi. Even if Wei Zhiqian didn't appear injured on the outside, it didn't mean that he was really completely healed. If Tan Emo pounced on him, she might ruin things. His injuries might be exposed. You're already a teenager now, so you can no longer throw yourself into his arms like you did when you were a child. Tan Jinchi hugged Tan Emo and said, Throw yourself into my arms instead. Mine too. Mine too. Tan Jinching and Tan Jini chimed in, for fear that Tan Emo would forget about them. Wei Zhiqian. Had he been her little uncle for nine years in vain? Little uncle, why have you come back again? Tan Emo had been stopped by Tan Jinchi, so she stretched her neck out and tried her best to lean toward Wei Zhiqian. Although she wasn't in Wei Zhiqian's arms, her heart was. Tan Jinchi. Tan Emo acting like this made him seem like a villain. Tan Jinchi simply let go and stopped restraining her. Tan Emo immediately jumped over in front of Wei Zhiqian. Wei Zhiqian raised his hand and touched his earlobe. Tan Emo immediately understood what he meant. It turned out that Wei Zhiqian had heard everything, so he'd hurried back. Wei Zhiqian had come all the way back here just to expose Yuan Keqing. How touching! Tan Emo was happy, but she suddenly felt a sullen aura behind her. She looked back and saw that her three older brothers were looking at her sullenly. When her little uncle was around, she abandoned her brothers. Even Tan Jinchi, who was usually the most level-headed, cunning, and composed, had a blatantly sullen expression on his face. Tan Mo, BDNV them how come she felt as if it was becoming harder and harder to be a middle dot of dot the dot road person. Su Mingjin said to Yuan Keqing with a cold expression on her face, what else do you have to say? Ji Qian is standing here, yet you still won't admit that you deliberately lied to MOMO. You still won't admit that you called her on purpose to disturb her and make her unable to concentrate on the exam. Yuan Keqing couldn't figure out what was going on. Yes, she had called Tan Emo with bad intentions. But she hadn't lied. Previously she had been very confident that even if Su Mingjin interrogated her, she would have nothing to be afraid of. She had been telling the truth, so even if Su Mingjin felt unhappy, she couldn't do much to her. But now, it seemed as if she had actually lied. Yuan Keqing felt extremely wronged. I really didn't lie, Yuan Keqing felt wronged and at a loss for words as she said, I don't know what's going on, sister, Su Mingjing interrupted Yuan Keqing's words and said to Su Mingjin, I believe Keqing certainly did not deliberately try to cause MOMO to screw up the exam. She must have misheard things. 
her calling MOMO before the exam was reckless. Kaching, apologized to MOMO. Su Mingjing pulled Yuan Kaching out from behind her. Cousin, in this situation, Yuan Kaching had no choice but to apologize. No need. Su Mingjin interrupted her in a cold voice. Even if she apologizes, it won't be sincere. No doubt she will still try to set MOMO up in the future. I really don't want to listen to this apology. Things have reached this point where Wei Zhiqian himself stood in front of them as proof. However, Su Mingjing still wouldn't admit that Yuan Keqing had lied, nor that Yuan Keqing had deliberately tried to sabotage Tan Mo's college entrance examination. What else was there to talk about? Su Mingjin didn't even want to bother keeping up the slightest pretense of cordiality. Mingjing, you can go home with Keqing. Su Mingjin did not intend to allow them to hold on to their pride in front of Li Xiangrong, Wei Kelly, and Wei Zhiqian. In the future, don't bring her here again. Keqing can't afford to provoke her cousin, Su Mingjin continued coldly. In the future, there will be no need to participate in anything related to MOMO under the guise of cheering for MOMO or being concerned about MOMO. Sister. Su Mingjing was shocked and sad as she said, are you severing ties with us in the future? If this means Yuan Keqing will never bother MOMO again, then yes. Su Mingjin said without hesitation. You won't even interact with me, your sister. Su Mingjing asked in disbelief. It's human nature to protect your own children. Su Mingjin took a deep breath and continued. Knowing that she did something wrong, you still protect her and refuse to admit it. Instead of educating her, you let her continue to harm others. How dare I interact with someone like you? You think that only your child is precious, so even if she hurts someone, you still protect her. My child got sabotaged by her and has to swallow it and act as if nothing has happened and continue to be trampled on by you all. With a clear conscience, I can declare that I have never done anything I should feel sorry about to you. I did everything I could do for you. However, MOMO is off limits. I can let bygones be bygones in regards to other matters, but if it concerns MOMO, no way. I might as well say it more bluntly. As long as Yuan Keqing is still trying to harm MOMO and you choose to ignore it or refuse to admit it, then we don't have to acknowledge each other as sisters. Chapter 90 College Entrance Examination Score You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 90 College Entrance Examination Score Sister, Keqing, Su Mingjing still wanted to explain. But Su Mingjin wouldn't listen at all. You guys should go. Su Mingjing had no choice but to take Yuan Keqing and get ready to leave. However, as she was about to leave, she said to Su Mingjin, Sister, no matter what your attitude toward me is, I will always treat you as my sister. Tan Mo couldn't stand Su Mingjing's disgusting attitude. Yuan Keqing's calculating and scheming mindset ever since she'd been a child was no doubt influenced by Yuan Zhengwen. But her pretentious side really came from Su Mingjing. Aunt, Tanimo said in a well-dot-mannered tone of voice, although my cousin has repeatedly harmed me, you can rest assured that I will not retaliate. I will always be waiting for her to repent. Su Mingjing felt as if she was being choked. What Tanimo had said was obviously kind, but why did she feel so uncomfortable after listening to it? After Su Mingjing and Yuan Keqing had left, Li Xiangrong comforted Tanimo, M-O-M-O, it's okay. As you said, you are still young, only 15. Even if you take the exam again next year, you will only be 16. You are so smart, so without Yuan Keqing's interference next year, you will definitely be able to perform very well. Tan Emo nodded obediently and thanked Li Xiangrong for her consoling words. In the tense atmosphere, Li Xiangrong couldn't stay any longer, so she took Wei Kelly and left. I am going to leave now also. There are still some things I need to deal with when I get home, Wei Zhiqian said, lest he be asked why he had returned. The three Tan family brothers, wishing him to leave quickly, didn't bother to ask. Little uncle, 
I will see you off, Tan Imo said quickly. Dot the three Tan family brothers. Why did she say you could take the exam again next year? Wei Zhiqian asked and they were outside. They knew that I turned in the exam ahead of time, so I pretended that I didn't do well on the exam. Tan Imo spread her hands and said, Yuan Kaching and Wei Kelly have been living in my shadow, so occasionally, I wanted to make them happy. Even if this happiness was short.lived, at least they would get to be happy for a while, right? She knew that Yuan Kaching and Wei Kelly had been overjoyed when they thought that she had screwed up the exam. You are too kind. Wei Zhiqian touched Tan Mo's head and said, they don't even deserve short.term happiness. In the future, don't be so soft.hearted. The more Wei Zhiqian looked at her, the more he felt that Tan Mo was too kind. Being so kind and soft.hearted would make her vulnerable to exploitation. Tan Mo was stunned. Turns out her acting like this was kind. Wei Zhiqian nodded his head affirmatively, and so Tan Mo said, then I will try not to be so kind. Wei Zhiqian left with peace of mind. While walking back inside, Tan Mo muttered to herself, it turns out I have always been too soft.hearted. My little uncle is so perceptive. As soon as Tan Mo entered the house, she was surrounded by Su Mingjin and her three brothers. M.O.M.O., did you really screw up the exam? Su Mingjin touched Tan Mo's cheek in a worried manner and said, was everything you said before just so I wouldn't worry? Why am I asking you to comfort us instead of the other way around? It should be her comforting Tan Mo, how much suffering have you endured alone? M.O.M.O., don't be sad. It doesn't matter if you failed the exam. Isn't it just an exam? Tan Jinxing comforted her. No, Tan Mo said quickly. I really did well in the exam. I just lied to Yuan Kaching. Really? Tan Jinchi was still uneasy. Of course it's true. The results will be available in 10 days. If I was lying to you, I won't be able to hide it at that time, Tan Mo said. They all thought about it and agreed. Tan Mo explained, since Yuan Kaching doesn't want me to do well on the exam, I will let her be happy for a few days, and then when the results come out, she will feel upset once again. On the day when the results could be checked, Qi might drag Ming Yeqing along with her early in the morning. Yeqing, aren't you going to check the results? When Ming Yeqing came to the Tan family home, Tan Mo asked in surprise, aren't you going to look at the results with your parents? My parents are busy with work, and they aren't at home at the moment, Ming Yeqing explained with a smile. If I stayed at home, I would have to check alone, so I might as well come over to be with you guys so things will be more lively. My parents have confidence in my grades, so they aren't particularly nervous. I can just send them the results via text. He didn't even have to make a phone call. The Tan family. Ming Yeqing's parents were really easygoing. Because today was the day when Tan Mo's results would come out, Su Mingjin didn't say anything further. Tan Wenxi and the Tan family's brothers were all at home. As they were talking, the doorbell rang. Auntie Guo was more calm this time. After she opened the door, she came back to tell Tan Wenxi and Su Mingjin, Sir, Madam, young Master Wei is here. Tan Wenxi wondered why an injured person like him was running around. Obviously, he wanted to know Tan Mo's college entrance examination results at the very first moment. As the time came to check the results, Chi Mai began to count down with the stopwatch on her phone. You can check it now. Hurry up. Chi Mai jumped directly between Tan Mo and Ming Yeqing. Tan Mo and Ming Yeqing, each holding a laptop, sat on a sofa in the living room. Wei Zhiqian occupied a position on the right.hand side of Tan Mo, and gave Tan Wenxi and her three brothers no chance to squeeze in. As a result, Tan Wenxi and the three brothers glared at him with resentful expressions before it was time to check the results. At this moment, Tan Wenxi and the three brothers craned their necks as they awaited Tan Mo's results to come out. Yeqing, are you even human? Qin Mai let out a startled cry, you actually got 745 points on the test. 
Qin Mai's face was almost pressed against the computer screen. Ming Yeqing put his palm against her forehead and pushed her face away from the computer screen. How can you see it clearly if you're so close? I'm afraid I'm mistaken. Qin Mai took Ming Yeqing's hand and looked at it carefully. You only had five points deducted from the essay, and you got perfect scores in the other subjects. Sure enough, liberal arts aren't my strong point. Ming Yeqing shook his head regretfully. That's why he had chosen science as his major. With this score. With this score. It's still not your strong point. Qin Mai wanted to smack him out of anger. Ming Yeqing, I dare you to show off again. Ming Yeqing. His words had really come from his heart. You basically got a perfect score, okay? Qin Mai said in frustration. Even with such a score, Ming Yeqing was still not satisfied. M.O.M.O., have you found out yet? Qin Mai was so angry that she didn't want to pay attention to him, and she turned around to ask Tan M.O. Wei Zhiqian retracted his gaze from Ming Yeqing's score, and looked at Tan Mo's computer screen again. Tan Wenxi and the three brothers anxiously ran over from the sofa, and they all poked their heads around to look. When Qin Mai saw the numbers on the screen, she screamed. Tan Mo was taken aback and quickly tried to cover her ears, but Wei Zhiqian covered her ears for her first. My, why are you still so jumpy at your age? Wei Zhiqian looked at Qin Mai reproachfully.